The ballot question this election will be, who do you trust to lead Saskatchewan's economic recovery? And I know this for sure. It isn't the NDP. The last time the NDP were in office, they drove people and jobs and opportunities out of this province. When the Sask party spends that big corporate money on ads, they tell you that we can't afford Ryan Miley and the Sask NDP. What is Scott Moe really saying? He's telling us we can't afford decent health care. He's saying that your kids don't deserve a good education and quality child care. A third province is heading to the polls in the middle of this pandemic. Scott Moe met with Saskatchewan's Lieutenant Governor today and asked him to dissolve the Legislative Assembly in order for campaigning to begin. The election will be held on October 26. We'll be looking to speak to Moe's challenger, NDP Party Leader Ryan Miley, later this week. First, though, let's bring in Scott Moe, the leader of the Saskatchewan Party. He joins us from Regina. Hi, Mr. Moe. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Vashi. Mr. Moe, part of the pitch that you are making voters in Saskatchewan in this campaign so far is that your party is kind of best positioned to execute an economic recovery to COVID-19 with strong financial fiscal management and a balanced budget by 2024. Now, the NDP says that means that you're going for austerity and you're going to cut program spending. Will you? No, absolutely not. Well, how we will... Uh balance the books here in the province of Saskatchewan is to first of all recover uh, to the economy, the, the strong economy that we had pre-COVID and then continue to grow that economy uh, providing uh, you know the resources to allow us to continue to invest in communities across Saskatchewan. This has been uh, how we have governed for the last 13 years and this is how we intend if we are fortunate enough to gain the support of the people of Saskatchewan to govern over the course of the next four. So if I interpret that correctly, you're saying that you're relying on economic growth to eliminate the deficit versus spending cuts. So you will not be cutting program spending? No, for, first recovery of our, our strong Saskatchewan economy and then second is to continue to grow. So I know that the COVID-19 tra trajectory is different in, in every province and, and we certainly have uh, taken a closer look at what's happening in Saskatchewan. Well, what we do see right across the country, though, is a lot of uncertainty about the trajectory of that economic recovery. Even versus six weeks ago, things are looking more uncertain six weeks later. If, in fact, the economic recovery does not take place at the pace at which you think it might. Are you willing to amend the projections that you've put forth? So, so by that I mean, if it happens a lot slower, does that mean that the deficit elimination date will change? Well, we are in, we're in a very good uh, position here when it comes to uh, the, our, our situation with respect to COVID. And we have had some regional outbreaks and we continue to have uh, different outbreaks uh, here, there, but in, uh, we are able to have uh, do the, uh, the appropriate testing, the appropriate contact tracing to ensure that those outbreaks remain uh, just that, regional in their nature. They don't uh, haven't spread across the province. We don't expect them to, as uh, the people in Saskatchewan continue to adhere to the, the public health guidelines uh, that have been put forward. The only time we do have some challenges is when people uh, do not adhere to those public health guidelines. So very fortunate here in the province. And, and in many ways, uh, the, the efforts that Saskatchewan people have made have allowed us to uh, respond by not closing down uh, large, as, as large a part of our economy during our response. And we have been able to recover as quickly as anyone uh, across the nation. I would point to uh, Saskatchewan having the, the lowest unemployment rate uh, currently, which uh, speaks to the fact that we are on our way to a recovery here in Saskatchewan, and we do have what the world needs as we uh, start to look towards a global recovery. You're, you're certainly correct when you talk about the unemployment rate. I believe in August, the province added 4,700 jobs. However, most of those jobs were part-time positions. Full-time employment increased by just about 1,200. The province is still down more than 26,000 jobs compared to the year before. And a lot of what happens, I think, with the economy in Saskatchewan is dependent on not only the rest of the country, but even the global economy, because, of course, the, the province is ex export base. So again, my question is, if in fact that recovery doesn't happen at the pace at which you're anticipating because of factors outside of Saskatchewan's control, are you willing to relook at that budget date? And, and the reason I ask is if you are stuck to that 2024 budget balance date or balanced budget date, that will fuel accusations from the opposition that if you're going to arrive there at any cost, regardless of the growth, you're going to look at spending cuts. 
Well, yeah, listen, uh, the, uh, the the goal is to continue to uh, not only recover our economy, but to grow that economy so that we can uh, right uh, this province's finances, which are in, uh, we're in very str strong and stable condition going into this pandemic. We have had to invest with many one-time investments to support the industries, but also to support uh, Saskatchewan families and Saskatchewan residents, as well as, as the communities that they live in. Um, that will uh, continue until uh, such time that uh, we are able to start to uh, further recover here in the province. Um, but we do look forward to, and I think everyone's expectation is, is that there will be a global recovery that will uh, find its way to the forefront as we hopefully get to the backside of this, of this global pandemic. And when you look at, whenever that is, when you look at Saskatchewan's uh, opportunity in supplying sustainable food, fuel and fuel fertilizer to the world, we're very bullish on on what we can achieve uh, in, a, in a provincial recovery and what we can uh, help achieve in a, in a global recovery. We are the party that has consistently uh, laid out plans for growth in this province. It isn't the NDP as they have a, uh, a record of reckless spending as well as a, a record of decline, uh, economically economic decline uh, in, in, in uh, their time in government. Um, and so we will continue uh, down that path of situating our province uh, to be in the very best spot uh, to capitalize on what we believe will be a strong and robust global global recovery uh, to our global economy. The, the opposition, the NDP, your 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 account, your competitors, I should say, uh, would not characterize what they are pitching as reckless spending. They would characterize it as investments in things that, for example, would help life make life more affordable for people in Saskatchewan. You've also said that you're going to target affordability in this campaign. They're pitching, for example, cheaper daycare for people in your province. What will you pitch to voters? We're also pitching uh, that the plan that we put forward uh, will be able to, uh, we will be able to find our way through a strong economy to actually pay for uh, the commitments that we are going to make. There's no such plan coming from the NDP. They will throw a number of reckless commitments at the wall um, with no plan on how they are actually going to uh, pay for these, uh, for these commitments. Uh, this is what we've seen from the NDP uh, when they were in government. This is their record. And you're going to see them run from that record uh, over the course of the next while. Us in the, uh, in the Saskatchewan party, however, uh, we have a record of, of a growing economy, growing population, and growing opportunity for that next generation. And you're going to see the Saskatchewan party run on the record that we have. And we're going to uh, be out engaging with the people across this province over the course of the next four weeks uh, to talk to them about the, what the future of their community, um, their family and their province looks like. Respectfully, Mr. Moe, you know, I think your questions are, are valid around how the NDP will pay for that. And, and I'll reserve those questions for Mr. Miley. My question to you was, what kind of investments will you make to help life, life become more affordable for people in Saskatchewan? Because you didn't answer that part of the question. Absolutely. And you're going to have to stay tuned, Vashi, over the course of the next number of weeks as we un unveil our, pro our platform. It will tie into the commitments that we have made over the course of the last 13 years. Investments in, in over 57 schools, investments in hospitals and healthcare facilities, investments in the people that are providing uh, those health and education services in our, our communities. You're going to see uh, additional investments in ensuring uh, that the, that families uh, uh, do have an affordable opp opportunity to live here in Saskatchewan. But you're also going to see uh, commitments uh, with respect to growing a strong economy here in the province and ensuring that uh, the people uh, that had to step aside from their place of employment for a short period of time due to COVID-19 will be able to return. And we can get back to growing uh, the industries that create wealth in Saskatchewan and by extension create wealth for, for all Canadians. We're very excited about the opportunities Saskatchewan has to uh, create an affordable affordable communities for our families to live in. Um, but those communities also will have uh, career opportunities for them, themselves as well as their children to uh, make a decision to hopefully stay here in the future. Well, I look forward to those details. Before I let you go, Mr. Mo, I, I wanted to ask you just from a sort of wider context, I think many Canadians are looking to the recent election in, in New Brunswick, the, the ongoing one in British Columbia and the election in your province for how these things can happen during a pandemic. What will you be doing differently in your campaign because of the pandemic? Are you limiting, for example, the way in which you campaign, how many people you'll meet with, things like that? Yeah, we're, we're adhering to all of the public health uh, recommendations that are there. I mean, our daily lives look very different. Everyone has a mask in their pocket. They put it on when they are too close, uh, in too close quarters uh, to others. Um, we are uh, changing um, the, the number of people we have at events, for example. We launched our campaign this morning in a much larger, much smaller uh, group than we we would have four years ago or would have at any other uh, period of time. So uh, like uh, everyone in Canada's daily life, our campaigns look very different. 
But the fact of the matter is, is as it happened in New Brunswick, as is occurring in British Columbia, as we will see these campaigns uh, being offer, operated in a, in a very safe manner, very different manner, uh, but a very safe manner. And we look forward uh, to October the 26th, where the people in this province will have a choice, uh, a choice uh, between uh, the two political parties that currently have seats in the legislature. And, and we are, are asking for their support to ensure that we can continue to move forward with a strong Saskatchewan. Okay, Mr. Mo, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for your time and best of luck in the campaign. Thank you, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.